and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Jen Cruz, and this is the Journey Radio Show. Hey, we're showing up as the She Squatchers, just as we do every Wednesday night. And I've got my trusty teammate on the line. Hey, Jenna Grover, are you there? Why, yes, I am. And boy, oh boy, do we have a wonderful guest tonight. We do. I'm so excited. Uh, We've got Mike Patterson from Sasquatch, Ontario, joining us tonight. And he has the most interesting sound clips I've ever heard. And so let's not waste any time and bring him right on. Hey, Mike, come on. Are you there? I'm right here. Nice to meet you, Jen, Jenna. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. Awesome. Hi, Mike. We're really happy to have you. And Tammy is sad she couldn't join us tonight. She says hello to everyone out there. She's been hitting the pavement hard, getting back to Virginia from her visit with us here in Minnesota. So uh, she's not able to join us tonight. But she says hello to everyone, and I'm sure she's going to be listening later. So, um, so Mike, I just have to ask you, um, how did you get started in this Sasquatch communication and research? And I mean, how did that start for you? Um, I, I didn't really go looking for it. It just kind of happened. I was spending a lot of my spare time in the woods uh, years back, I guess, 2007, eight, and just uh, bringing a camera into the woods by myself on my time off and photographing wildlife and nature. And, and it seems that I was being watched. And then uh, one day I had an epiphany that um, now I look back at it and I tend to think that that thought was planted to start looking for the big guys. I, I never thought it could happen here in Ontario. Um, I always thought, you know, you had to go to the West Coast, BC or whatever, to uh, have any chance of an encounter. I always had an interest in the subject, but um, I learned pretty quickly there's stuff happening right here in Ontario. And, and now I've been at it for a dozen years. A dozen years. That's awesome. That's awesome. Jenna, you're on mute. I am. I am. It's only because I want to hear everything he says. And I was just thinking Baker's dozen next year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So you, you realized that you were being watched. When was the first time you, you saw what was watching you or became aware of what was watching you? Um. I, I think they imprinted on my life when I was a child because I had an incident when I was 10 years old. One of them standing at the side of the road, I was walking back from a, my parents. My family was at a chalet for the weekend up north here in Ontario. And um, it was a place called the, the Swiss Inn. It's closed down now, but the sign's still there. I drove past it last year. And um, I got uh, my dad had dropped me off to go fishing. You could do that back then, you know, not get arrested, right, for leaving your kids. And um, I started walking back around dusk, and I and I saw a Sasquatch, and I told everybody it was a bear, which is quite common. And it had a traumatizing effect on me at that time, and um, you know, kind of buried it in the back of my mind over the years and it, it uh, all came back to me after I got involved in this subject and I looked back and, and realized that uh, that was a Sasquatch, not a bear. 
stand up side of the road, probably maybe could have been 50 yards up the road. And as soon as I saw it, it just kind of turned and disappeared into the into the brush at the side of the road there. But uh, then they showed up in uh, 20 or 2008. That's when I started looking for them. And the very first three times I went out looking, I had incidents happen with uh, vocals. Um, the second incident was a close vocal encounter, and that's the one that changed my life, why I'm where I am today. So, But as far as visuals, though, that's been very, uh, very minimal. There's things I've learned about Sasquatch that uh, I've been very adamant about because I've been given hundreds of encounters. And um, there's been physical contact so many times at this point, right? You know, I get pats in the head, pokes, and and it happens both indoors and out. Um, vocalizations right, right there. Just it's just absolutely crazy. Sasquatch activity is paranormal, right? There's so many people involved in this subject that are still in denial about this, but I've been given so much contact experience and supporting evidence so i've been very strong in my uh you know just speaking out about this and you take a lot of crap when you talk this real stuff right but i'm i'm a strong guy i'm you know they've, they've tried to knock me down but i'm i'm still standing well good i do have a question for you 10 years old and you have your very first experience with Sasquatch did you were you afraid of going back into the woods for years after that or were you just like eh you know I'm gonna go fishing a it was a bear like did you convince yourself it was a bear or did were you scared what did you do um what happened was there was a there was a creek there that I was fishing and I remember I still remember and this is I'm in my 50s now, so this is at 10 years old. I still remember the family that was sitting around the campfire when I went running back when I saw this thing. And I still remember they were looking at me with this shocked look because I was pale white. I was white as a ghost. I remember I couldn't talk. My my mouth was pouted down, and I finally got the words help <laughs> out. And uh, the the father had given me a ride back up the road, and I, and I told him I got I got chased by a bear and I pointed to the area and, and uh, when he dropped me off and I went into the chalet, my, my family and others, they were all in the, the main living area of the, um, the chalet there. And it was, so when I walked in the door, everybody was there and, uh, you know, like I still remember the looks on their faces. I was, I was still as white as a ghost, scared the hell out of me. So after that, um, no, I've not really had a problem with going into the woods, but I, I had a lot of fear when I went, you know, into this subject. Lots of fear, and still happens sometimes. But not so, fear, not fear of them though. You know, it's uh, sometimes I I had an experience. Uh, I guess it was last year. I have this spot that I go to by myself in in the area where Neff's family lives, and um, I, I brought it in friends and family there but uh, there was one night I was in there by myself and and I had just turned uh, shut my light off laid down in my tent and I had my uh, tent fly off so it was just all meshed right and and uh, almost as soon as I shut my light off and lay my head down I hear heavy footsteps walking towards me maybe 20 feet away so I'm thinking bear that's always my first thought bear and I sat right up. I turned. I had a light on my head. I turned it on. Nothing there, and the sound was gone. And so I knew it was them. They do this all the time. This sort of things. So I had my moments of fear. Yeah. Yeah, but not as a ten-year-old. You just kind of let it just fly off your shoulder like a grain of salt, and just took life as it came. Then you just weren't afraid of going back in the woods. Um, well, that didn't happen in the woods. I was uh, I was walking on the road when that oh, happened. Oh, I'm so Coming sorry. To... I misunderstood. No, no, that's okay. I was walking back from fishing up the road, and this Sasquatch was standing at the side of the road on my on my right hand side, and it just standing there. And as soon as I saw it, I just remember it turned and 
took a step and it was gone, it just disappeared. So at this point, I'm thinking that that was done purposely, especially, you know, what I'm experiencing at this point, it's uh, their abilities. Um, I've asked them, they, they haven't known me. Um, so I, I asked them if they knew, if they knew me before in another time and they said uh, no. So, or no, no, sorry. It was, I asked if I was one of them at another time. They said no. They do know what I was at another time, but I'm not going to get into that. I, I'm actually at a point of written communication. Oh, wow. So it's, yeah, it's insane. They, so they, they understand English. How, how does that work with written communication with them? I use a uh, chalkboard and a sketch pad and I make a visit to the cottage. This is a private location. I go by myself in the same area and I get, I get activity all the time. They always show up, but when um, the cottage owner and myself are together, they just love us together and it's tenfold the activity. So when we're there, I'll put a sketch pad, on the table indoors. And uh, this was developed over years. It started outside with writing on a little um, pad with a crayon. And, and now it's developed over time to uh, um, this chalkboard and sketch pad. And they give drawings and I'll, I'll ask questions out loud and I'll write them down and then they will respond. Not to all of them, but I do get some quite some amazing information out of them. What what year? I mean, how long ago was it when you when you first got that initial answer back? Um, you mean you, you mean with Neff calling my name or uh, any kind of response from Bigfoot with you? Like how long ago? I mean, how long have you been visiting this spot and going back and forth? I mean, how many years ago have you been working on this with the audios? Well, it was it was 2008 that I had that close vocal encounter that, you know, that was really close. It was three giant guttural whoops and he sounded 10 feet tall. And I remember at the time he said, I even commented, it sounded like he could speak English. And then I was in that area um, for about four years. And there was even one night and I had this uh, recorded on an old eight millimeter um tape video camera that I had at the time. This was way back in 2008, I think. And this was in the winter time. There was a lot of moonlight. Now I had another, um, another guy with me and it was, but I think it was about two o'clock in the morning on a week night. And I was looking at these uh, tracks that crossed this trail we were walking. And I was trying to figure out if it was a deer jumping or what it was. I was looking for toes and I couldn't, uh, trying to figure this out and then suddenly I hear or we both heard bipedal footsteps crunching through the snow right around us and you could see everything uh, it was, there was a lot of moonlight right so that was the sorry, this thing popped up there so that was the first time they um really showed me their their abilities and I didn't know it at the time I was freaking out I I like I said I had this on video not uh visual of them but I had this sound of this bipedal walking and, and me freaking out and i ended up i taped over it because i was in denial like when i when i had my first vocal close vocal encounter i knew exactly what it was and it changed my life and i spent the next uh, two weeks in denial you know you're sitting there playing this thing 24 7 in your head and um and you know what it is but uh, it's it's funny how your your mind reacts to this when it's not supposed to exist i understand i've seen things myself that normally i would never believe anybody else would have seen but i did and so you you sit there and you're thinking oh my gosh i can't believe this just happened <laughs> you know so i'm excited to have that happen with bigfoot so if you're ever wanting us to um come out your way and and you want to take us out just let us know <laughs> It just sounds so amazing. I'm, I'm not. I'm, not, I'm so serious. It would be so amazing. She's always Sorry, trying Jen. to get an invite. She's always trying to get an invite. <laughs> but you know, everybody that well, most of the people that we interview are so interesting, and they have such wonderful. 
it's such wonderful experiences. I just want to be part of it, you know? So yeah, I'm not trying to like beg, but you just let us know. <laughs> I understand. I understand. Awesome. I'm actually thinking of um, doing some outings this year, but I, I, I have a very um, protective nature over this area where Neff's family is because of all the trouble we've gone through. Not Nothing, you know, um, uh, just that uh, there's been so much harassment. I have this spot that I go to and I, I basically take, I, like I said, I've taken close friends and family in there. That's it because I'm, um, uh, just the layout of the area. It's a lot of private uh, property up there, right? Um, but yeah, it's uh, the, the Sasquatch activity is um, it's everywhere, it really is. So I know that you said that they can understand English, and in some of the audios, I hear them saying your name. Yeah. And okay, I know that that might be hard for some people to grasp or to 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 think that that could be real but um i do remote viewing of locations and um i remote viewed the location uh, some locations out in yakima for mel who referred me to you uh and i actually identified a location where i was seeing some natives in the 1800s that were with bigfoot and i said they were together right here they were like really friendly um they were they were friends they're smiling they're together um, and, you know, I just kept saying they're together and the woman is closer to the, like, they're practically touching and the man is on the other side. So it's, there's no fear whatsoever. And, you know, he then told me that that was actually the spot where his, his tribe had a village that lived with Bigfoot. And now it just looks like woods. But at that time, it was where they had a, a village where they actually lived with Bigfoot and they could speak the same language. So... I think it's very possible that they could, um, that they could learn and, and understand our language. Um, or perhaps it's more of on, on a mental level. I don't know. Um, but, but I, I would really like for Sarge to play some of the clips. If Sarge, if you could play like se the, the first batch of seven and maybe keep the last one till after the break, that would be great. I love that piece. I do too. Is, is he going to play them or do you want a little insight on each piece? Well, sure. You could give us a little insight on that one. Um, that was at the cottage area. It was May. It was in May of 2013. This is right when they, uh, but after eight months of making visits every, every week, um, this is when they first started really vocalizing. They start vocalizing from the very first visit, but just little little bits and pieces, which they do all the time. Uh, you know, they still do that. Um, but when that happened, that audio clip you just heard, that's right at the time when they really started to let, let themselves be heard. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. All right, let's go to the next clip. It almost sounds like he's rattling his throat at some point there, but there's actually two of them speaking simultaneously, uh, an older male. I don't believe, I'm not sure if that's Nefer, an older one, but there's definitely a, uh, a younger, most likely female um, speaking at the same time. And I've said this to uh, others before, because I've heard the voices of the children. I've recorded them. You know, I, I have this phrase I captured out of thin air right inside the cottage one night. And 
I tell people, if you were to talk to one of their children on the phone, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between them and us. They, they are, they sound human. They are human. They are human types. They're not, they're not homo sapien, but they are um, part human. They, they, I ask them the question, are you human? And they give me a, a Y slash N. So yes and no. That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. Yeah, those abilities of theirs, that's the, I would assume, the non-human part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to the next clip. Go! That, that's an excerpt from a actually a larger piece where there was two of them. I run audio through my sunroof in my vehicle and there was a there's foam a windsock on top of the microphones. And actually the beginning of the clip, which isn't in that, is a younger one messing with the foam cover making all kinds of noise and and then neff is there and he's you know it's a, it's obvious he's speaking language there so that's that's why i show that piece because it shows language and and there's um different this that piece at the end that you're going to play i'm going to show you there's different things being spoken about there and and i believe there's different languages being spoken in the whole different thing that I've asked them the question also um, what language do you speak do your what language do your people speak and they said they wrote all yeah. and and then they um, on the chalkboard they had written this specific word and they put an arrow and said speak here so at that cottage area they speak a specific language there Interesting. Interesting. That, yeah, that is very interesting. There is a question in the chat room asking, but are they alien? I asked them, um, where do you come from? Where do your people come from? They wrote home here always. So I believe the, the, they're more indigenous to earth than we are. They, you know, they, they live in balance with nature with, with the earth we're the odd man out here the odd thing out on so earth too. i think Big so time. too everything you know, else you know, would be fine put humans in the mix and everything just goes to shite i think so too and you know i'm part native american and the you know different tribes and the elders will talk about how we came here from the star people that we were placed here from the star people and you know so you know even the most old stories say that we don't come from here <laughs> i believe that too and if, and have, you know humans are the ones that don't fit in with everything yeah. else so there's there's more than um with the whole Sasquatch phenomena, there is more connected to it. The whole star people, ET, UFOs, it's all connected, which is why I believe it's also covered up and they, they try to keep this ape narrative alive. And, you know, they can't hide the fact that they exist from us, but they can do their best to control the narrative of what they are and what we think they are, which is why I believe the BFRO. Uh, I just think they're a disinformation organization at this point. You know, they completely avoid the, the truth and they hide the reports with all the paranormal stuff. They don't post them publicly like the other stuff. And, um, and Dimitri actually used the term Bigfoot gate to me once. I have it in an email because he, uh, he also believed this was covered. This is covered up, and he's been involved in the subject, or he was, since 1964. Okay, that's the name of it. Okay, I understand. 
Um, we're getting really close to our natural break time. I'm wondering if maybe we should go to break a little bit early so that we can start on the next clip when we come back. So stay tuned, everybody. We'll be right back with Mike Patterson. All right, I'm going to um, be right back. Now, Mike, I've been writing down some questions to ask you, so I can't ask you now because they never turn out right when I ask them. But this is being recorded, by the way, so rules still stay the same. <laughs> You're doing okay. great, by the way. You're very, very natural. And I'm sure how many how many of these interviews have you done in the hundreds? <laughs> I, I don't count. Quite a few, you know. Um, there, yeah, I, I'm pretty comfortable doing it so well you sure sound it so at, at this point right i just did a coast to coast one too not too long ago that was that oh. was pretty cool and and i did one with mel um what you and jen were mentioning there uh -huh. i did one with mel uh was it last week oh wow yeah that was cool you know because uh, bob gimlin was on there and oh, i love bob it, yeah he apparently just Love the show, so I was happy to get some Aww. good feedback. Because I, I just open up. I'm full on crazy, you know. I don't care. <laughs> well, good. I Bring it on. Lay, yeah, I lay it on thick. <laughs> That's good. All right, Jenna. I heard you talking about um, questions. We're going to hold all questions until. That's actually our, what I, what I said. Until we're done with our audios. Wait, hey, thirty seconds. 30 seconds down. I'm going to put myself on mute. <sighs> yeah, roll. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Hey, this is the Journey Radio Show, and we're the She Squatchers. Won't you check us out online at shesquatchers.com? And you can click on our events page there and see where we're going to be. In just a couple weeks, we're going to be in Nebraska at the Nebraska Bigfoot Conference. Please come see us in Hastings, Nebraska. And you can see all the other events that we're going to be at. We're actually going to be in Yakima at the... Uh, at the their Bigfoot con conference in October, and that would be really cool if you could be there too. Um, so I'm, let's get back with Mike because we have so much to share tonight with you guys. We have some awesome audio files that he's sent over for us to share. And uh, welcome back to the show, Mike. Thank you. Yeah. So let's get in back. What's what were you gonna say? Oh, I just said I love the audio. You know, I never get tired of it. Yeah, me neither. Me neither. Well, let's let's play that next clip and th then we'll talk about it. No. No. That's just a little piece to show the the difference. That's my voice, obviously the second one, the the feeble sounding voice in comparison to that one. All right, very cool, very cool. Let's go to the next clip. Right. was again in um, uh, May 2013 when they started really letting us hear their voice and I remember I was laying in my tent that night and I could hear them so there's a hill there 
and then it's down by my car where they gravitate to my audio recorders. So I could hear them, but not very loud. And I could hear him say my name. And I remember telling Dwayne the next day, I think he, I think he said my name. And he was like, what? And he thought I was nuts. And we played it back. And that was the first time they, they called out my name, that file right there. Do you go out there and say, hey, my name is Mike? Yeah, I used to, I used to pat my chest and I would say, I'm Mike. I'm Mike and Mike and I show them how to pronounce my name and say it slowly. I did that with a few words and because I knew they were right there, right? I, I've learned they, they're they close and they're watching. And like I said, I've had physical contact many times. There's many times Dwayne and I stood out there on the road together and Neff is right there with us. He's standing right beside us. I can't see him, but, you know, I can feel him. Okay, okay. Not to mention the stuff coming out of thin air, too. <laughs> well, see, now you're, you're saying things that make me want to ask questions and go, not get through all the audios. We got to get through the audios first. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's play the next one. Were you out of auto? Mike. Oh, Lord. <laughs> It was uh, June 28, 2013, and that was the first time he tried to say flower, and he couldn't pronounce it properly, he couldn't control his voice, because they don't normally speak English, right? This is not his first language. Um, they're highly telepathic, too, so I, I think a lot of their communication between each other is most likely telepathic, even though they still speak out loud to each other. There's all kinds of people that have heard their voices, right? But that was the first time Neff um, said the word flower and he couldn't control. Him. So it was, uh, and then he chuckled at himself at the end because he knew he couldn't say it right, but he was trying. Why was he saying flower? Um, they've used marbles and flowers as items, uh, two items that have been um, to show their presence. Uh, but the flowers have been actually fake from some silk flower bunch that they picked up somewhere and little bits and pieces off this. So, I, so there was one visit I had just pulled up. I'm there for five minutes. Uh, Dwayne's outside. We're talking to each other. We're t 20 feet apart. And then suddenly his eyes go wide and a, a footprint had just appeared um, as we were standing there. So I'm down there measuring it. One single print in snow. So I'm, I'm down on the ground measuring it. And he's, he's standing over there a few feet away, and I, I look towards him to say something, and I look back, and now there's a flower sitting in my, sitting inside the print, uh, just to say, hey, we're right here. And um, so there was one visit. I took a flower, and I walked up to a tree, and I put my hand on the tree, and I held the flower, and I was showing him the difference of flower and tree. Um, two words that he just absolutely loved and he would say them continuously just a lot of fun especially when you you know you hear them vocalize these words back to you and and a lot of people will think that it's mimicked and stuff but um no they completely understand the context of our words and what they mean okay. and they continually show that too so. Okay, okay. Well, let's go to the next clip. Oh! 
Okay. That was that was the clip. I guess he's not playing it again. It's that okay. was also June twenty eighth. Um, there was actually quite a few vocals I I got captured that night, and and in that one you can actually hear his inhale exhale breathing as he's vocalizing. And if anybody was to try that at that velocity, you're going to end up in a coffin fit. And I don't care who you are. That's what's going to happen. It's just if you really listen closely and observe how he's vocalizing it's um it's amazing that is amazing all right let's move to the next one you you my friend you The end of that he actually says achu um i was having an allergy attack that night so that's that's where that comes from the ninadadwa at the beginning i asked them what that meant they wrote invader go so that was with regards to trespassers that have plagued this situation um then i uh, there was some other stuff said and i asked them a question what is pauta um, it was something that he had said in another uh, vocal capture that I have. And he instantly responded with Ning Chu, Tu, Da, Du, Da, and that big, awesome Da at the end. And you can tell that that sounds like an ancient language. And he responds immediately to that question. And then um, I had we had asked him about inviting a certain individual. Um, so he's also vocalizing about that and then after that it's we love you so he's he's actually talking about all kinds of different things in that one piece so it's uh that are not related you know they're just all different things he just it's taken me a long time to look, uh, figure that out but slowly wow um you know ninadagua is that what you said Nina Dadwa. Nina Dadwa. Yeah. Okay. That really sounds like Ojibwe to me. Um, I have another clip, which is the most, which is the newest and actually the longest he's spoken since then. That was March 20th, 2015, before things went south between the, the 
cottage owner myself for a while, but um, you know, we're we're we figured things out, we patched things up, we've been at it again for years, but um, there was a recent uh, recent visit where he said Nina wa da, so not da wa. He he said wa da, and he he repeated it three times because I asked him to. Excuse me, and it's an amazing piece. It's it'll be in a new video I I have coming up, um, which I'm sure everybody will love because it's uh, it's the longest Neff has talked in since 2015. Nina Dawa. Nina yeah. Dadwa. And then uh, the, the most recent one I have is Nina Wada. So that was Nina Dadwa. And then I have Nina Wada, which I assume is something similar related to the trespassing because we, we talk often about that when we're at the cottage because there's so much of it going on. We're just uh, trying to catch these people. We will. Yeah. Okay. So Neff is Neff is well aware of our conversations. There's as much activity that goes on inside as out, basically. Like I'll I'll be putting on my shoes to go get uh, to go entice activity outside, see if anything happens, and suddenly he'll ping me off, ping a marble off me while I'm putting my shoes on, or you know, something like that. It happens often. All right, so we're going to start asking the questions. You know, well, first of all, I just love the fact that he said, we love you. That was so cute. Um. <laughs> I never used it, and I never said the, the term we to them in that. Like I've said, love you, buddy, and I love you guys, and I love you. I've never said we, so that was them. Okay. There, there are people telling me that, because that was my last visit, and then they put, the plug was pulled, so they knew that was my last visit. That's why they were doing that. Why was it your last visit? That, that, that was back in 2015 because of the, all this stuff going on and the owner pulled the plug because he didn't know if I was involved. He, he was just tired of the harassment and the stalking going on. So he just pulled the plug and said, that's it. And uh, so I, I had a, quite the roller coaster emotional ride there for about 15 months before the big guy showed up in my dream. And suddenly I have a new spot to go to right where they live. Oh, that's cool. Amazing how they work. That is amazing. So I've got questions in the chat room. People are asking, yeah. have you not been, a, they haven't showed themselves to you physically? Well, they have, just not a close range. I, I haven't had a close visual. We do know what Neff's face looks like, though, very clearly. He's, a, he's got, he's black, black skinned, no hair on his face, very muscular face. Um, and quite smile. <laughs> what do their teeth look like? Um, human, basically. You know, the, the uh, from what I saw, I've seen, what I know, not so whitish, more uh, kind of almost a grayish tinge to it, but um, yeah, very human looking. Okay. And, and, and like a lot of people say, between, they look between human and ape. And yeah, I could agree with that. Okay. Okay. That's the, the question I always think about is how, what do their teeth look like? Cause you see the drawings, they differ so much in the teeth a lot of the time. So I'm always curious, what do the teeth look like? So, um, and I know our human teeth look different. Like, uh, I've got the real pointy ones, you know, <laughs> and other people don't. They look like they're meant to just eating plants where I'm obviously a carnivore. Uh, <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I know that there can be a variance there, but I, I was just very curious about that. Um, and let's see, there were other questions back here. Let me scroll back. Um, how would a human woman call to them? Would we have to like deepen our voice like that? Or have you tried having no, no. a woman call to them? Um, 
if you go into an area where they where they are, they already know you're there. You don't even really have to call them. All this banging on trees and stuff. I think it's more in, invasive and they're going to approach you in a, in a way that if you approach them in a, in a more, um, uh, you know, just, just not so intrusive like that with yelling and banging on trees. And I used to do all that too, but I've learned I show up there. They already know I'm coming. So they know those of us who are coming to look for them. Um, if you show up quietly and just do your thing, they love the element of surprise. So if you're, everybody's just trying to be quiet to listen for them, they probably won't do anything. As soon as somebody makes a noise, they'll make a noise. That's why I've learned this running audio recorders where um, the audio catch, captures the, the sound great. Um, but at the time, my ear doesn't capture all of it. You might question did you hear that? And when you play the audio back, that was them, you know, you scuff your foot or something and suddenly they, they'll cough right at the exact same time. It's like they know what your move is going to be. Yeah, I was going to say that you sound far away and, and they sound close. Like, how are you positioning your audio recorder? Well, I run multiple audio recorders, but I, I typically run a pair of Omni mics through my sunroof. And they tend to gravitate to my audio. Like I, I've I'll come down from my tent. I remember uh, one time I, I would set up my tent and go into my tent and he would start up shortly after. And things are always evolving, always something new, always something. That's our motto, always something new. They always give something new every visit. And it's been this way since the beginning. Um, but it got to a point where I set up my tent in the winter, crawled in and minus 18 just to um, see if Neff would vocalize. He did. And then I come out of my uh, tent, I go down to sleep in the cottage where it's warm. And on the way down, I stop and I look at by my car and there's a fresh footprint right there. So I know I got awesome audio and he's, um, it was right at the, uh, at the microphones. And in that time, as I was standing there doing that, he actually called it to me from maybe 30 feet away for the first time. So then it was, uh, I think it was nine visits in a row, right till March 20th. Um, nine consecutive visits. I would, so after I set up the tent once, or, or that was the last time I had to set the tent up for doing that. And after that, I would just standing at, just stand out in the open, just stand there and wait. And, and he would call out to me. He would call out to you. You didn't have to call out to him. Oh, I call out to him all the time. Um, one thing that happened the last visit, this is, this is absolutely awesome. This is eight years he's never done this. Like I said, there's always something new. We're sitting in the kitchen, um, as we always do, sitting at the table, having a conversation, and suddenly Neff's voice came out of the room right beside us. So he vocalized indoors last visit. I missed the first one. I said, hey, I should fire up an audio recorder. So I did, and I captured, I think it was three more. So he did it, uh, he vocalized four times inside the cottage last visit while we were sitting there having a conversation. So that was pretty wild. People have a difficult time with this under, you know, thinking this is stuff that is, it's paranormal. It's their Sasquatch are interdimensional. You know, this is the truth of their existence. This is what they are. They are interdimensional. This is how they come into our living rooms or whatever room. I've had activity both indoors here and they've they've shown up here. Um, my my girlfriend, who's also named Jen, uh, we had a uh, an incident behind the house here. My landlord texted me and said I heard a couple of wood knocks out back. It was about seven o'clock at night, and I and I said we. Um, to, to my girlfriend and said, I got to go back there at some point tonight, just out of respect. So we walked back there, I think it was about one o'clock in the morning. And um, we stood there for a minute. There was quite a bit of wind. Suddenly I hear this wood knock sequence that I used to do years ago. 
which was really odd. And, and I told her, I said, I, I just heard wood knocks off to my left. She didn't hear it. And then it was about a minute later, it was a young male walked right about six feet in front of us. He walked right across our path. Um, we, we both heard, clearly heard his footsteps. We saw the leaves kicking up on the ground. And then she saw a visual of his form through a shimmering. So that was, um, I was really happy she got to witness that. Because, you know, I, I got all kinds of stories, but it's stories until you experience it yourself. And then and your head explodes when you see that. <laughs> So I, I'm wondering if you can explain that, like how, what do you think that they're doing that they're not being seen? Is, are they cloaking? Are they in our dimension? What, what do you think is going on there? I believe that they're shifting their, their energy, their vibration, their frequency. Um, perhaps they travel with an orb form. I don't know, although I do know orb activities related to their presence. Um, I've witnessed it both indoors and out. Uh, I believe they're in they're in another dimension. They, they've tried to or they've tried many times at this point to convey about this how they do what they do, how they disappear into thin air. Apparently we can do this. This is what they've told me. We have this ability to do what they do. And they're, they've been trying to show me in drawings, which I asked, am I allowed to show that publicly? And they said, yeah. So I just haven't put it out yet. So quite a few drawings where they're trying to convey this across how to uh, go into that other realm that they reside in. Because they can leave a footprint in snow completely invisible. That footprint will appear because it has to. If I'm feeling them, you know, them touch me. You know, if they did the same thing in snow, that snow is going to press down. So they're just completely invisible. All right, Jenna, I know you're just busting at the seams here with questions. Get it done. I am. There's so very few times. There's so little time. Um, the first thing I wanted to ask is, um, have you ever asked them if they can heal? That's one big question that we've been asked a lot is. I've asked them, yes. I. I've had nothing um, come back from them telling me that at this point, although I do have a friend who has been healed by them, not Neff's family. Can they all do that? I don't know. Okay. Um, now, you mentioned the harassment and the stalking. How are you handling that? I know it must be very, very hard. At this point, um, water off duck's back. I, I've, I've gone through... It's been a roller coaster ride, but I'm I'm strong, you know. So at yeah. this point, I'm that I, I I know I speak truthfully, and they've shown up in my life. They choose who they want to um, connect with and make contact with, and there's something obviously about me they like, and and I've been nothing but completely truthful throughout this whole thing. So oh, they good. continue to give uh, supporting evidence and. And I'll just continue to speak my truth, regardless of what anyone says. Nice. Do you ever do you ever see any lights or um, anything like that? Like, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I know you're short for time, so I'm trying to answer yeah. quick, right? So the the uh, we had one incident where we were both sitting outside. There, it was completely overcast. There was a very light snowfall, and there was nobody around. It's very dark night um, in the winter. And we're sitting there in chairs outside, and suddenly this, this uh, it's like the color of moonlight, this light come on, shining on the forest floor, maybe 20 feet away from us, is this big triangular, like maybe 30 feet long at one point, 10 feet wide, and then going up wow. to a tape. It had no defined edges. It come on like a light switch for about five seconds and then shut off like a light switch. It was impossible. There was nothing there for that to happen. But they knew that both Dwayne and I were looking at that same spot, even though it was dark when it happened. And we both said to each other, you see that? Yeah, I saw that. Okay, I saw that too. And, and then I wrote it down. Wrote the down. Wow. So there's been stuff too. Very cool. Lots. Very cool. Now, I know we're at the end of the show, so I, wanna, I want you to give the opportunity to tell people how to find you and how to contact you and find your YouTube channel. 
Um, yeah, I have a YouTube channel, Sasquatch Ontario. And uh, recently, there's there's eight videos up there, but I have uh, probably uh, close to about six dozen videos altogether. I put them behind a paid subscription wall at this point after giving you know everything away for the last eight years because uh, I, I've just had to because of the harassment and you know the, Dwayne's mother is being stalked to at the cottage. We don't need the attention, so this is the main reason why I've had to do this recently. Um, so I have that uh, Sasquatch Ontario on YouTube and SasquatchOntario.com. I have a website as well with some stuff up there. Right? Very awesome. SasquatchOntario.com and Sasquatch Ontario on YouTube. Go check it out and subscribe to his channel. And thank you so much, Mike, for coming on the show and sharing with us tonight. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you next week right here on the Journey Radio Show. Good night. Thanks for having me.